Hello and welcome to the latest in the Ask the Data Covenants Coach video series. And today's question is, can I use artificial intelligence to create data quality rules? Now, I think this is such a good question and incredibly topical because there's so much hype at the moment about the use of artificial intelligence for all sorts of things. Now, it's been creeping up quite a lot in our lives over the last few years. Whether we realize it or not, it's what Amazon uses to suggest what else we might want to buy, what Spotify uses to suggest what else we might like to listen to. But people are now starting to use it a lot more in business. And there's been a lot of focus recently on tools like ChatGPT and Content.ai that can write blogs for you that can write emails for you and there's a lot of um, exciting things going on in the space and I think this prompted a debate that I got involved in LinkedIn recently about can you use artificial intelligence to create data quality rules now a number of the big vendors have been saying that they've been using artificial intelligence to help you do this for a while but it's not a topic that I've ever particularly been asked about to answer on these videos so it hadn't come up before so I wanted to share with you my thoughts now, with all things artificial intelligence, they, the artificial intelligence is only as good as the data it learns from. So the ironic thing of this situation is to get a, a, an, an AI giving you some really good quality data quality rules, your data quality has to be really good to begin with. And if it's not, the AI is going to learn from what you give it and, and do its best guess of what may be right or wrong with it. So you can see that without human intervention, we might not actually improve our data. It might correct it in perhaps the incorrect way. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not actually dissing the use of artificial intelligence. I think it could be useful, but I think we must be very careful to use it appropriately and use it as part of the process of humans setting and creating data quality rules. I think it's going to be very similar to how I've always encouraged my clients to use profiling tools when setting up data quality rules. So profiling tools have been around for ages and they look at the data and they spit out what it thinks might be outliers or things that are outside the norm of, of what it's seeing for this other data. In effect, it's artificial intelligence. But what I found time and time again over the years is that you present those profiling tools to your business user and they might say something like, oh, but those outliers are okay. They don't happen very often, but we don't need to change them or stop them happening. It's just that it's less common for, for that to happen. So you can see that where there's human involvement, the human can spot that those exceptions are not exceptions. Those outliers are perfectly acceptable. We don't write a rule to pick them up and try and change them in any way. But what's artificial intelligence going to do? It's going to say, well, 90% of our data fits within this range. These 10% are outside of it. So clearly they must be wrong. So I think it's fair to say, I think that using tools, whether it's profiling or artificial um intelligence using uh, suggesting data quality rules could be a good basis to suggest to your business users ideas but don't blindly rely on these make sure you keep that human element involved because otherwise you're going to end up trying to perhaps artificially cleanse and change your data to to fit some norm which actually isn't the right normal so definitely use these tools to help speed up the process to help give your business users some ideas of what may be right or wrong with your data, but do not let AI go and run your data quality all on its own. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, please help me on my mission to help as many people as possible be successful with data governance by liking, commenting, sharing this video on your choice of social media. And if you've got a question that you'd like me to answer in a future video, please email it into questions at nicolaraskam.com.